Hello and welcome back to Cooking with Craiger. Today I'm going to be cooking my super duper yummo nachos deluxe supreme. Now this is somewhat of a new recipe for me. I'm going a little more extensive than I normally do. Usually I'm pretty lazy. I'm a very lazy cook unfortunately. My wife can attest to that but I'm going to be doing a little more effort into this one and hope you enjoy it. So the first step that I'm going to need to do is make some homemade tortillas. Now I've never done this before so this will be a bit of a learning experience for me. It does require a lot more effort than just getting some store-bought ones. Apparently these are supposed to be much more better, so. Much more better? Yeah. <laughs> these are supposed to be, I don't even know what I want to say. Better than bought Yeah, chips. better than bought chips. They're supposed <laughs> to be able to hold the toppings a lot better. They're a lot more durable. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I have some store-bought flour tortillas here. I've just got some of the small ones. Um, you can get these, there's a million different types of brands. You can get whatever you want there. What I'm going to do is cut these into my tortilla shapes and you basically just cut it like a four-way pie. Set those off aside and we'll do another stack here. So this is just one pack of the regular flour tortillas. I'm not sure how many are in here, probably 10 I think. I don't know if this will be enough but we're going to start with the one pack and see how it goes. Do you know what size that is? Uh, I believe that is an 8 inch. I'll just I'll look at the packet in a sec here. Yeah, good question. You're going to have to deep fry these eventually, but what you want to do first is dry them out a little bit. So I'm going to bake these at 200 degrees Fahrenheit in the oven for 10 minutes, 5 minutes per side. So make sure you flip them after 5 minutes so you get the dryness on both sides. Okay, so I have the first pack of tortillas cut up into tortilla shapes and put onto three different baking sheets. So this is how many tortilla chips I'm going to get from that one pack, which I think was a stack of 10 of eight, stack of 10 of eight inch tortillas. Um, this might be enough. I'm only cooking for Alicia and I, so this might be enough for us for dinner tonight. I don't want a whole lot left over, but let's start with this and see how it goes. Okay, my tortillas have been in for 10 minutes. I flipped halfway through. Let's see if they've dried up much here. Mm, not overly dry. So I'm gonna put them in for another couple minutes and then I'll pull them out and we'll start deep frying. Okay, I have dried out the first bag of the tortillas. Ooh. I've got my oil heating right now, so it might be spitting behind me here. But that's how many tortilla chips you're gonna get from one bag. I'm going to dry out and deep fry a second bag so it makes sure I have enough chips. So I'll show you what that looks like when we get to that step. But at this point, actually, I've got the other bag here and I've got a few set off to the side that I didn't put in the oven at all. So these are still, well, they're starting to dry out now, but these are still basically fresh. So I'm going to deep fry these and see what the difference is between drying them out and not drying them out and show you guys a difference if there is any. But I have my oil heat it up right now um, we're at 360 degrees so just a little more you want to deep fry it somewhere between 350 and 375 if you can find a candy thermometer that you can put onto the side of a pot or something you can just use whatever pot if you have a deep fryer you can use that and just set the temperature that way but it is time to start deep frying these we've got a little ghetto set up here of our GoPro on top of the mini weeds box on top of I don't know what that is. It's an oven. Else. An oven? Oh, microwave. Is that for microwave? Oh, yeah. that also, okay. So yeah, we'll have a pretty good angle there of the deep fry and maybe we'll do a slow-mo and go from there. Okay, I have the first three in. You want to deep fry these for about one to two minutes. You don't want them to get too dark. We're actually puffing up quite a bit, so hopefully they go down when I pull them out. Oh, it's like little samosas. Yeah. Okay, the first three are out. Um, yeah, I got little samosas going on there, but I've cooked these for maybe not even a minute per side. And that's the first batch, so maybe I should poke these with a stick or something. Maybe you have to dock it, because when you're doing pastry, and if you don't want it to puff up, you gotta dock, okay. like in a pie. In it? Yeah, yeah, just with a fork. Okay. You recording that? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> so there's a tip from the wife. I have to dock these apparently. I don't know what that is, but she told me. So uh, I'm going to take a fork or actually a toothpick and I'm going to poke some holes in these so they don't puff up like this because I don't think this is what we really want. 
Okay, so I have a couple that I've docked and cooked. Um, there might still be hots here, so let me just be careful when I grab them. Yeah, they're still hot. <laughs> Uh, one thing I did want to mention is after you're done deep frying, make sure you put these on some sort of a rack or a tray that has paper towel because you want to soak up that excess oil. You don't want these to be very oily. As you can see, it puffed up a little, but poking the holes or docking it did make a big difference. So, yeah, you'll see that. One thing I wanted to let you know is when you pull these out, you want to make sure you put some salt on them and season them because they're going to be pretty bland otherwise. A few moments later. All right, the tortilla chips are done. Now, it was a lot of work to do all that, and I've already tried some. They don't taste like tortilla chips, but they are crispy. So I'm gonna try them out, see how they go. Just buy some store-bought ones, get a good brand. Just use those. <laughs> I don't know if this is worth it. I want to try it out. I've never done it before, so. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is optional. I'm going to be mixing some refried beans. So I've got a can of refried beans here ready to go. And I'm going to mix it with some sour cream. In the blender or the food processor, I want to get it really, really smooth. Then I'm going to put it in this little squeeze bottle. I'm going to chill it. But when the nachos are done, I'm going to spray or squeeze this on the top of the nachos as another dressing. So you're going to have a mix of refried beans and sour cream. I think two parts sour cream to one part refried beans. This almost looks like one to one. <laughs> I'm not going to be pulling the beans out anymore. So, okay, let's give this a go. So it looks like it's mixed up pretty good. I think that'll work actually. Tastes just like refried beans mixed with sour cream. So I guess that's what I wanted. <laughs> Again, this is entirely optional. So if you don't want to do this, if you don't want this on there, if you want to just make this and put it into a bowl off the side and not put it on the nachos, you can do that too. But I want to add something a little bit extra to it. So. All right, so our next step is we're going to be making a queso or a cheese sauce for this. It's going to have a little spice to it as well. I have never made one of these before, but we're going to get going here. So actually, before I start that, in order to make the queso, you're going to need one tablespoon of all-purpose flour, one tablespoon of butter, you're going to use this in the pot to, to make a roux, which is going to be your thickening agent. Once you cook that down, you're going to add in, I've got a cup and a half of cold milk here, some shredded, uh, this would be medium cheddar, I think it is. So we're going to use cheddar. You probably want to use cheddar for a queso. You want that orange looking uh, color to it. Real cheddar. Yeah, real cheddar. This is, I, and I grated this cheese. This is from a block and I grated it. If you buy the pre-shredded stuff, it's, has anti-caking agents and chemicals on it to make it st to stop sticking together and it actually doesn't melt that well on the on the chips either so I'm gonna use some proper cheese there and I'm also gonna put some uh, tomatoes in here I friggin hate tomatoes but tomatoes 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 let's call the whole thing off <laughs> uh, I'm gonna put some tomatoes in there more for color than anything and yeah that's it oh sorry and then I've got some chopped up Pickled jalapenos. You may have seen these on a previous episode. <laughs> okay, let's get going. So we're gonna start at a just below medium heat. You're gonna want to melt your butter first. Get my fan on. And again, if you're doing this in a steel pot or a non-stick pot, if you have a silicone whisk, that's gonna make it so much easier. So I'm gonna use that. There we go. Now we're getting our sizzle. Put in my flour. I'm gonna cook this down for about one minute. Again, if you notice it's too hot, if it's really, really cooking hard, then you wanna turn the heat down. I'm pretty happy with what I got here so far. And the reason you wanna cook this for at least one minute is you want everything to kinda of mix together. And, and you kinda of wanna cook the flour out a bit too, yeah, right? That too. That's going pretty good. I'm going to put in my milk, um, do a little bit at a time. Make sure you're mixing as you go. You'll usually get that sizzle every time because you're putting cold milk on a hot pot. The reason you want to whisk this is it's going to get lumpy if you don't. So, a little bit more. Okay. 
Okay, I'm going to let that cook a little bit. Okay, I've had this cooking for probably two minutes. It's actually starting to thicken a little bit. But I'm going to put my cheese in now. Now the recipe calls for one cup. I'm going to kind of eyeball this. I would say we're pretty close to a cup there. I want to make sure you get this melted and mixed in. Ooh, that looks pretty darn good. Okay, now I'm worried that when I add these cold, wet tomatoes, it's gonna make this break, but I gotta try it and see. That should be good. Put in my pickled jalapenos. I probably should go light on this. I don't think, yep, yeah, I don't think Alicia's gonna want too much of that in there. Okay, just basically incorporate it. Anything else I should do now, you think? I can't think of anything. Oh. I thought you were just generally asking me. That's why we don't have a script. We do plan these a little bit, but we don't have a script. The tomatoes did not cause it to curdle, which I was worried about. It is a touch too watery right now, so I'm just going to let that cook out a bit and it will thicken. And if you do notice that it's not thick enough, you can always make some roux off to the side in another pan and put it in there and, and uh, that'll thicken it up for you. Okay, I've got the queso off to the side for now. And what I'm gonna do next is make my taco beef. So I've got, I don't know what this would be, almost a pound of ground beef. All right, I put just a little bit of oil in there just to kind of give it a kick start. And you're going to want to brown this beef. You just want to cook it and brown it a little bit. Get, try, try to get most of the pink out. And then we're going to mix in some onions. We're going to cook those a little bit. Then we're going to put in all our spices. Then we're going to put a bit of chicken stock in just to give it a little more body. And then we should be good. Okay, I have the beef browned. Now what I'm going to do is actually put on, push it all to the one side of the pan here. And I'm gonna to try to get the fat to come down to the other side of the pan because I want to cook my onions in there and my spices. Okay, that's good. So I got some chopped onion here. I'm gonna put in, I don't know, maybe a quarter cup. I just want to sweat these off a little bit. I don't want to mix everything together quite yet. I kind of want to cook these on their own. Probably cook the onions for, I don't know, one to two minutes. You don't want to see any brown on them, but you want them to start to look a little bit translucent. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all my spices in this last part here. You don't have to do it this way, but um, this is going to help the spices cook a little bit in the pan. Okay, well, this is not working. There we go. So I'm going to start with chili powder. You're going to need a lot of this. I'm going to do that. Just let that cook out a little bit. Okay. Uh, I'm going to put in some smoked paprika. This stuff's very expensive, so if you uh, don't have it or you don't feel like putting it in, you don't have to. It just gives it a bit of a smoky flavor, which I really like. I'm going to put in a little bit of coriander seed. Or ground coriander. Sorry, Mom. I hate coriander too, but the recipe I saw had it. I'm going to put in a little bit of garlic powder and cayenne. So, why would you sell cayenne with holes this big in a shaking jar? That doesn't make any sense. When you're seasoning with cayenne, do it like this. Okay, that's better. Um, a little bit of oregano. A little bit of cumin. It's better if you have these all ready to go on the side. I didn't, but it's fine. Okay. So that's all my spices. So now what I want to do is mix everything all up. Break up the beef a little bit more. Good 
going to be nice and crispy. All right, cooking tip number one, how to saute. You want to make sure your stuff's loose and then you're going to push it out a little bit. You want to tilt it down and then when you pull it back, you kick it up. You don't want to be too forceful with it. All you're trying to do is make what's on the end there kind of jump back into the middle of the pan. That's going to help uh, mix everything together. And I believe saute is the French word for jump and that's basically what this means. It's kind of like the uh, French term saute, also meaning to jump in ballet. There you go. Okay, so I'm going to let this cook just a little bit more. I want to make sure I get all that flavor in there and then at the very end I'm going to put in I think a half cup of chicken stock. This is fish stock. Oh, no, it's chicken. Jeez. And then let that reduce. This is also going to pull a lot of the spices off the pan and a lot of the uh, beef remnants, things like that, which is all flavor. Okay, had the beef cooking here in the chicken broth. I let the chicken broth reduce. I think I put too much in, so maybe go with a quarter cup. That's probably all you need. You're just, again, trying to deglaze the pan with the, with the liquid and give it a bit more body too, so. I'm happy with that, so I'm gonna set that aside and I'm gonna show you what our queso looks like. So it's sort of thick. When I mentioned earlier that if your sauce isn't thick enough, you can do some roux on the side, another shortcut that you, you uh, can use as well is you get some cornstarch and you mix in some cold water with it. Okay, so I've mixed the cornstarch in and with some cold water. You probably want two parts cornstarch to one part water. Now I'm just going to put a little bit in here. And that's called a slurry, right? Yeah, exactly. And it's kind of a shortcut, kind of a cheat way to do it. If you did this for someone who was a professional chef, they might be able to tell the difference. A roux versus uh, the slurry mix. And look at that, it's already thick. Instant thickness. Um, when you do put some of that in there, you want to make sure you cook it a little bit just to make sure it's all incorporated. Okay, so we got our beef, we got our queso sauce. I think we're good to start assembling. Okay, uh, I'm going to start with one layer of the tortilla chips on the bottom. Try not to overlap them if you can because you want to make sure you get as much of everything on each piece as possible. And we're going to do a couple layers of this because we have enough chips, that's why I cook so much. So, Okay, so we've got our first layer of that down. I'm going to start with a bit of cheese. So we've got our, our medium cheddar here again. We've got a Monterey Jack. Uh, make sure you line your baking sheet with tin foil first as well because you don't want this stuff burning and sticking to it. I'm going to put a bit of my taco beef on. If you notice it's too oily, you can drain it through a sieve or some sort of a colander or something like that. But fat equals flavor, right? It does, but it also equals heart attacks. <laughs> now, you can use whatever fresh veg you want. I'm going to put some green peppers on mine. Oh, capsicums? Yep, capsicums as they're called in Australia. I think that's the correct term for them. Probably. You don't have to use green peppers if you don't like them. I would suggest putting some chopped onions on though. If you want to use green onions or scallions, you can use that. Shallots might be another right option too. And the only thing left on this layer is my queso. Ooh, this looks good. Okay, I'm happy with that. You basically just want to repeat that again. You can go as high as you want. I'm just going to go two layers for us here. I'm not overly happy with some of these chips, so I know the flavor of them, but I'll give it a shot and see how it goes. Now, I think the mistake I might have made with these is I believe these are flour tortillas, and you want to make sure you get corn tortillas when you're doing this. I mean, they're super crisp. They're going to work perfect for what we're doing here. It's just, it's not going to have that 
signature store-bought tortilla flavor. <laughs> Doesn't matter the order you put all this stuff on, just as long as you double it up every layer, or you put it on every layer, I mean, sorry. Some more onion. I usually put a little more on the top layer. I want to make sure you get as much of everything as possible. And another layer of queso. Now this, this might be too spicy for Alicia. We'll have to see. Because we do have pepper jack cheese on there. There's a touch of cayenne in the beef. I don't think that'll be spicy though. But I put a few of the jalapenos in here. So. I'm very happy with how that looks. Make sure you preheat your oven and don't do what I just did. So I'm just going to put mine in the center rack at 350 and just keep an eye on it. I just want everything to kind of melt down. Everything's cooked other than the onions and green peppers, but I just kind of want everything to melt down there. Cook that until the cheese is melted. Uh, you want the shredded cheese to start bubbling a little bit. If it's starting to brown, then you're getting a little too far. You want to pull it out at that point. So. We'll see you when it's ready. Okay, we've had the nachos in for, I don't know, about 10 minutes. I took a peek and I saw the shredded cheese starting to brown on the one end, so there we go. I think we are good. So I have the refried bean and sour cream mix in the fridge. I've had it sitting there since I made it probably an hour ago. So let's see if this works. Perfect. Excuse me. Don't forget the one on the corner there. Oh, geez. Perfect. And then if you want, if you have enough left, I do here. After you kind of pick away at the first layer, you can squirt some more on after. And there you have it. That is the Super Duper Nacho Deluxe Supreme, I think. Something like that. And that's it. All done. Thanks again for watching. Are you done? Uh, 